Hi, this is Court Cod One of Nationalist News and Notes. Noted with great interest the fact that on Tuesday, apparently, the New York Times printed a short story that involved the assassination of President Donald Trump. I think what we have here is liberal masturbatory uh, fantasy land at work. Still, it was somewhat surprising to me as someone who has lived part of his life in the New York, a large part of his life in the New York metropolitan area. Uh, the old gray lady is... Uh, as the Times is known, was always famous for, at the very least, its stylistic uh, conservatism, in that, that they always tried to play, however irresponsible they might be in actual fact, they always tried stylistically to take a very conservative, measured tone very establishment, very correct, perhaps not correct in the waspy term because it's run by Levantines, apparently it's owned, not right now, it's owned by uh, Carlos Slim, it's owned by Mexicans, but you know their staff is mainly of the Levantine persuasion, and, but it's still somewhat amazing to a, you know, an old time, uh, person who lived in the New York area for many years, New York City area for many years, that uh, at the Times would go this low in terms of printing a masturbatory fantasy about the assassination of Donald Trump. These people are really rattled. This is the ultimate in Trump derangement syndrome. I mean, this is not a propaganda piece, really, because... You know, the Times is, after, you know, after almost two years of a Trump presidency, the New York Times is certainly not going to persuade anyone in any particular direction by printing a piece as this. This is just the happy fantasy world, murderous fantasy world of the American liberal. Violate the norms of political correctness, as Mr. Trump has done, and we will kill you. Once again, there's this menace. You know, we have violent Antifa running the streets, threatening people, beating them up. We have uh, we have people who really do want to murder anyone to the anyone to the right of a, of, a, of a George Bush type. So these people, they call us the haters just because we don't bow to them about our views on race, our views on immigration, our views on ethnicity, our views on nationalism. That they, they have given themselves permission to literally hate and fantasize about the death of a president of the United States by murder. This is the kind, these are the kind of sick wackos that we're dealing with. Uh, I remember there was a kind of a, there was a a National Socialist once of the uh, who wrote a who wrote a novel which ended up in the assassination of uh, I think it was Hillary Clinton but that was written back in the 90s and I think it was written after the Clinton administration if I'm not mistaken so nobody on the right really has done anything uh, so patently offensive as the call for the assassination 
of anybody. So this is uh, this is this is new territory we have here. There's a worldwide nationalist revolution going on. It's subsuming Europe. It's even gaining ground in, of all places, South America. And these liberals are in a complete state of hysteria because their world is falling apart and it seems everything they do not only fails but actually seals their ideological doom. But we've got to be careful. You know, we've got to win the midterm elections. You know, we can't we can't let leftists in the United States for a long time get anyone anywhere near the levers of power or they will send us all to the gulags because they are so angry. You know what it was is, you know, at the beginning of 2016, they thought they had America in their permanent possession. They were convinced because of the demographic changes in the United States that because of the huge numbers of Hispanics moving in, and they thought that 100% of them, you know, would vote Democrat. But actually, you know, if you looked at the, at the true demographic state of things, they were celebrating too early. They had absolutely no idea that they'd be a serious, they'd be serious ideological opposition to their sick plans for America. Well, you know, the Trump revolution came and they're very disappointed. They've thrown everything at them. See, and they're very used, particularly these media types, they're used to getting their way. You know, in the good old days, they could vilify anyone and drive them, essentially drive them from public life. You know, you had left-wing left -wing media, left-wing newspapers. All they had to do was get together in a, in a conspiracy of vilification, and they could destroy people at will. Well, you know, the Internet came along. And although it may not be a tool we can use forever, because they're probably going to ban us all eventually, um, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a counter-narrative to their narrative. And, quite frankly, the left in America has become very boring, very formulaic. Uh, they have very little in the way of interesting and entertaining uh, spokesmen. They're mainly a bunch of scolds, frankly. Scolding people for violating these norms of political correctness which have really not penetrated most of the country. You know, they dominate these rules of political correctness. They dominate, you know, the coasts. The coastal elites and semi-elites and, you know, people like brainwashed school teachers and such. But they really haven't, they haven't really penetrated the soul of America. And... They thought they were in a greater position of power. They thought they had us all brainwashed. And then, you know, there were some changes in communication in America where you had some form of dissident media. And now there's counter-narratives to the leftist narrative. So, they've gone into a state of complete hysteria, which is somewhat amusing, but also a little dangerous. But we shall see. This is Corn Cod One of Nationalist News and Notes signing off.